new today, shots fired, an NYPD officer hit, the suspect killed. We'll tell you what cops say they found after the smoke cleared. Our stretch of dry, mild weather continues, but we could have some patchy fog by Thursday morning. Well, New York Live is here to take you inside a brand new wellness sanctuary in Brooklyn that's giving guests a much needed moment of zen during tough times. Hey, what's up, friends? This is News 4 Now for May 11th. I'm Kay Ingram. Now, first up, a shooting suspect is dead. A police officer is recovering after he was shot in the Bronx. He was released from the hospital earlier this morning. Uh, more police um, presence, um, not just during the daylight hours, but overnight. That would probably make a difference. They, 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 they shot him down on a school block. It's a school right there. It's a school right there. It's a church right there. I have to commend our courageous officers. This is what we ask them to do. And they're on the streets every day and night, risking their lives on behalf of New Yorkers. It happened Tuesday night in Claremont when police say 25-year-old Ramik Smith ran from two officers approaching him. We're told Smith fired two shots at the officers, hitting one of them in the arm. Police say Smith was hit in the head by return fire and later died at the hospital. Officials say Smith has multiple previous arrests and was awaiting sentencing on weapons charges. Family of the suspect and neighbors say safety needs to be a top priority. Meanwhile, we've got a stunning development in an unusual case in Queens. The man wanted for killing his girlfriend and wounding one of her neighbors has been found dead in Brooklyn of an apparent suicide. According to police, 55-year-old Pedro Cintron was found between two cars with a gunshot wound to the head. Cintron was accused of shooting and killing 51-year-old Migdalia Ortega, a longtime employee of the NYPD. This happened on Monday inside an apartment in Ridgewood on Fresh Pond Road. Synthrone was also accused of shooting another woman who lives in the building after she came upstairs to see what was going on. She was taken to the hospital in critical but stable condition. All right, now take a look at this new video of a Coast Guard rescue off the coast of Long Island. You're looking at crews respond after a rogue wave disabled a boat Sunday night near Montauk, injuring all four people on board. Now, despite battling heavy seas and challenging conditions, the Coast Guard crew was able to rescue all four of them. I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Raphael Miranda. We're stuck in this pattern, but I think it's a good one to be stuck in. Overall, pleasant and mild conditions again expected as we head throughout uh, the evening hours. You can see hour by hour temperatures eventually dropping back down into the mid 60s. We'll see that mix of sunshine and clouds early on, a uh, partly cloudy sky overnight. We may have some patchy fog forming, but notice those temperatures do stay mild. Nothing chilly about this. Even by midnight, we're still in the mid 60s. It's a good place to be. Now you can see in our hour by hour forecast, we do have those coastal clouds. We have one system off to our south and there may be enough moisture coming in overnight that we see some patchy fog by your Thursday morning. So it's a dry commute. It should be easy. We're not looking at any real weather drama here, but the cloud shield comes in again, maybe even all the way to the Hudson Valley. More sunshine north and west of our area and especially Long Island, Connecticut and the Jersey Shore. We could have some patchy fog by your Thursday morning, mostly cloudy and mild overnight tonight. Low temperatures in the upper 50s. More of this beautiful weather to come over the next several days. Now, at a time when it feels like you can't turn on the news or browse your phone without seeing some troubling headlines, couldn't we all use something to uh, lift our spirits? Well, you are just in luck because New York Live is here with a new wellness sanctuary doing just that. If you're looking to get your zen on, there's a place that just opened in Prospect Lefford's Garden where you can do that and a whole lot more. Today we're visiting Gaia Nomaya. Sada, Andrew, congratulations on the opening of Gaia Nomaya. What exactly is this place? There's a lot happening here. This place is a space to let our inner child run wild and have a social wellness space where we can take care of ourselves to then take care of others through different practices. So it's 7,000 square feet, it's huge. You're gonna give me a little bit of a tour of the space? Yeah. All right, so where are we right now? Right now we're in the Gaia stage. Right here we have a lot of uh, live music in this part. 
Also, we have DJs sometimes. We have cacao ceremony on Sunday with breath work and sound meditations. A lot of dancing too. Ooh, tell me about the decor in here. What are we seeing? It's all different local artists from all over Brooklyn. It's kind of like a, a mix of repurposed materials and local artists coming together with us. And then we can go into our favorite wow. room of the space. We have thousands of pounds of uh, Himalayan salt here. It's ancient salt. It's the only salt that exists in the world that's not polluted because it's underground, so it's protected. Uh, there's 132 different minerals in it. Even the ancient Greeks were using salt therapy to cleanse their lungs. We actually do breathwork classes in here. We do uh, sound healing in here with different instruments. It's a really a magical place. And now we are in the cafe, which is really the first area you walk into when you come to Gaia Nomaya. And what kinds of things do you serve here? So it's mostly vegetarian, all organic food. We have uh, alcohol, but also non-alcoholic choices like elixirs that put you in really good moods that are good for you as well. Our goal is that everybody is welcome. We want everyone to connect here. So all the, all the options. Thank you guys so much for having us today. It's really incredible what you're doing here and your energy and all the love you're trying to spread. So I can't wait to come back. Cheers. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Uh, this next and last story is truly heartbreaking, but a little bittersweet. A 100-year-old World War II veteran who lived in New Jersey his entire life has been laid to rest with military honors. His burial was delayed until now because he had no relatives left to claim him. But it turns out he had more family than he realized. News 4's Brian Thompson is here with the story. Solemn notes for a World War II veteran who died alone and penniless at his Hackensack home. The Bergen medical examiner just recently confirming 100-year-old Eugene Dednam by name. Mr. Dednam was a person who pretty much stayed to himself. You know, he, um, he was a very reserved, he was very quiet in that regard. Um, he liked to do things on his own. But for county officials, law enforcement and veterans, his death would have gone unnoticed. But dozens here today were not about to let that happen for this quiet man who in death made a big impression. He was a supply truck driver to the front lines in Europe during the war, part of what was called the Red Ball Express. The combat arms units always get the accolades, but without people like Eugene Dedman, we would never have won the war. And coming home, he worked at Macy's in the city, but never married, never had children. Today, he had family, though, a family he never knew and who never knew him. One veteran putting a newspaper bio in a glass frame in his honor. I did not know him, but spiritually and from the military part of my being, we had a connection. The fact that Dednam was African-American in a segregated war for freedom was not lost on Bergen County's Director of Veterans Affairs, who himself was an Army Ranger. A lot of them, like, including Mr. Dednam, he was uh, a black uh, American, and he didn't get the respect he deserved when he was home and probably when he was serving. But he did today, black and white, military and civilian. He was buried in his uniform, kept fresh all these decades later, buried next to his parents. I once was lost, but now I'm found. All right, friends, as always, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you back here tomorrow on News 4 Now. See ya.